Welcome back to Bucket List Adventures and thank you for joining into this exciting little episode where I took a short weekend break away from the busy city life. So we are in the park, we just finished registering and uh, it's about 15 kilometers before we get to our campsite and it's now quarter to seven, the sun is just about to go down and um, we've got a beautiful golden sunset over the Kalahari. Now it's just to make ourselves to our campsite and then quickly pitch up tent and make a little boma before we might be greeted with some lions. So let's keep our fingers crossed and hope we don't um, get early visitors before we can even set up camp. My words haven't even had chance to cool down yet as we were welcomed by a pack of wild dog not two kilometers from the Kutsi South Gate. It's not every day when you see a pack of wild dogs this close and so comfortable. It seemed like they wanted to follow us back to our campsite. They were so inquisitive and they were super comfortable with their vehicles and our presence. Spotting these wild duck walking around the bucky. <laughs> this is an awesome sighting. This is literally two kilometers from the gate. We just entered the park and it's it's basically dark. I'm, I'm so glad that was a beautiful sighting. We were so blessed now. A full pack of wild dog. There was about seven or eight of them. And they were all adults. That was an awesome sighting. That was an awesome sighting and they were in such nice condition, nice fat, good looking, really healthy, healthy wild dogs. The bush always looks different at night, but after a while of driving and looking for the correct campsite, we managed to find it, off hook the trailer, start a campfire and it wasn't too long before we could relax and soak up the night sounds of the Kalahari and the sizzling fat dripping from the meat that was cooking on the campfire. First morning waking up at Kutsi, we made our way to the Malusi waterhole where we spotted the leopard the last time we visited Kutsi. We didn't see any animals this time and I think the reason for that was the recent rainfall in the area that provided enough water in the field 
so the animals didn't have a reason to come to the main water holes. Just my reason was for manta. After having our coffee and spending some time by the Malusi waterhole, we decided to make our way to the Muretwe pan. The pan is a huge dried up pan that has turned into a grass plain. The plain is home to large herds of oryx, springbok, ostriches and some jackals here and there. At first arriving at Moreswe the animals looked a bit spooked and this made us think that the wild dogs that we saw last night couldn't be too far. But it wasn't long before they started relaxing and we could spend a good amount of time watching the oryxes and the youngest members of the springbok herd. Usually we would spend the whole day exploring around the area of these pans just to see which animals would visit or pass through the area. But we always explore the northwestern part of Kutsi, so this time around we decided to head back to the southeastern side and to see what animals we might spot there. We're just here on the T junction of the cut line. I just quickly want to check for some grass and stuff that's under the bucky. I don't have a bash plate yet, so you've got a lot of grass and stuff going in there. <sighs> Let me just quickly show you guys. That was a lot of grass. All of that grass. But now. There are thorns everywhere. You can believe it's a leaf off and other. Kick eye lungs. It's not a bit of an upskirt. No. She had to go up here. I think you can upskirt. Yes, The decision of heading back to the southeastern part of Kutsi would prove to be a very good decision as we found the whole pack of wild dogs from the night before, not too far from the campsite area where we were staying at, just chilling and playing around in the water hole.
Spending close to four hours with them at the waterhole, it was clear to us that they weren't only here using the waterhole as a place to rest and play. It seemed like they have claimed this waterhole for themselves and used it as a strategy to lure the animals closer and closer to them as the heat of the day made the prey thirstier and thirstier by the hour. And as the day's end grew closer, ten members broke away from the waterhole and started skipping across the grass plains in the direction of a lone oryx that has been waiting and observing these wild dogs from a distance, very patiently. Initially we saw them passing the oryx thinking that they might have seen something of more interest on the other side of the grass plain, but no, they turned around and came back to the oryx. And it was obvious that this was the plan all along, where they would run past the oryx acting as if they haven't even seen it, but using this opportunity to see if it was kicked out of the herd because of age or if it had any injuries before they decided to meet the oryx face to face. But it was clear that the oryx wasn't having any of that. And that the oryx would meet every attempt from the wild dogs with a generous amount of pushback. After a beautiful display from the oryx, it was obvious that the wild dogs were no match for the sharp wits and speared horns. And they soon decided to head back to the older pack members and to call it a day before they had any injuries on their side. This was also a good time for us to head back towards the campsite, seeing that we didn't have much daylight left and we still had a meal to prepare, while we knew we had wild dog in the area. I have only had the opportunity to visit Kuzi on weekends, but the park always provides with plenty diverse animal species and every time I visit I see new kinds of birds. And even though Kutsi is a small park comparing to the other parks in Botswana, it is still the southern part and connected to the central Kalahari, which is a massive park in itself. But in my opinion, Kutsi definitely has the wild element of the central Kalahari. Waking up knowing it's the last day of a trip is never fun for me, and it usually leaves me with mixed emotions. We have all heard and used the expression, there is no place like home, but packing up the camp always feels like I'm leaving a part of me in the bush wherever I visit. But luckily, Kutsi isn't too far from where I stay, and the gates are always open, so I know I'll be welcomed the next time I want to visit. And to be honest, I'm a little excited, because leaving means I can visit again, and I never know what to expect or what I would see whenever I visit Kutsi. There's only one thing that I know for sure, Kutsi never fails to surprise. Guys, thank you for joining into this little episode of uh, Bucket List Adventures. We, we just took a short weekend to Kutsi. And um, like always, please like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you are notified whenever I post a new video. And then who knows where we go next. But then you can join us on the next Bucket List Adventures. Cheers.